Things are going buck wild at the sandbar. Buck wild. Because what day is it today, Dan? Memorial yeah. Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend. There's how many boats do you think are here? We got Elizabeth too. Hey! Like hundreds, plural. Hundreds. Plural. We'll have to do like a little run by of how many boats are actually here, but uh, good idea. I'm gonna get in the tower and show you guys what's going on. All right, welcome to the top of the boat. Holy macaroni, it's high up here. So before we got to the sandbar, we did a little bit of uh, hog dogging and some spear fishing. Before I show you what's in the cooler, let me play you that footage right now. I live in Key Largo, which is this island right here. And in this video, we're gonna take my boat all the way down to the Isla Mirada sandbar, which is located right here, also known as Whale Harbor Channel, I believe. This is about a 30, 40 minute boat ride. But before we go to the sandbar, we're gonna stop at a couple patch reefs right around this area and do some hog dogging. You're not allowed to spear fish in this area, but you can get in the water with some fishing line and a hook and try to snag a fish that way. After we do some hog dogging, we're gonna go further out here where you are allowed to spear fish because you're more than three miles away from land. And we're gonna do a little bit of spear fishing. And then we're gonna go to the sandbar and party a little bit. All right. How's it look, Dan? Okay, all right. There. Dan saw some hogfish, and the best way to get a hogfish behind your boat is to throw some chum in the water. And in this case, I'm throwing fiddler crabs. I caught these in my backyard, and fiddler crabs, lobster, oysters, shrimp, any kind of shellfish, seafood that sinks to the bottom, the hogfish go crazy for. Bye -bye. Oh, Dan's already got it. Got that? Yeah. Well, that didn't take long at all. Dan's already got a hogfish on his yo-yo, and I spot one right under me. So I drop my jig and shrimp down to try and catch him. Hold on, pause the video. I was just editing, and I figured the easiest way to explain how a hog dog, hog dog works is, well, why don't I just show you one? So this is the one that I use in the video. This black thing is called a yo-yo, and you can buy them pretty much any tackle shop should have these. I would recommend getting a slightly smaller one, but this is the only one I have, so that's the one I'm using. Then on the yo-yo, I got about 30 feet of 50 pound test. I used to use like 20, 30 pound test, but if a big hog grabs that, sometimes they snap the line, and I found that with 50 pound test, the hogs bite it just as good. They don't really care about that line. And then at the end of the line, I have a weighted jig. Can y'all guys see that? A weighted hook? In fact, it is this guy right here. The one ounce South Florida Fishing Channel Lip Candy Jig. The three quarters ounce also works really good. That's the size I would recommend. If you're only in like five feet of water, you could probably get away with the three eighth jig but we're at about 15 feet of water. So I would suggest going a little heavier, three quarter ounce, one ounce. And all you do is put a shrimp on this. When there's a hog fish sitting on the bottom, you just drop your shrimp in front of him. And when you see him put this in his mouth, I just hooked myself. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> when you see it in his mouth, give him a good tug. It'll also work with grouper. And as you're about to see in the video, a lot of little fish will also try to eat this, like grunts and stuff. So you kind of got to battle through them. If you want to support the South Florida Fishing Channel, it really helps me out. Go to rwboutdoors.com. Get yourself some South Florida Fishing Channel lip candy jigs. Or man, I got so many jigs. All of our lip candy jigs are made and poured and painted right here in Florida and shipped out of Florida. So you're helping not only me, but a local business. Let's get back to the video. All right, let me explain what's going on here. I'll zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. There's a hogfish, you see? Oh, he almost grabbed it. I'm letting my bait swim to the bottom and a little grunt grabs it. These little grunts are annoying, but bam! The hogfish grabbed it. I may have lost mine, but Dan's got his in the net. We find that instead of grabbing the hogfish, it's a little less stressful on them to scoop them up with a net then take the hook out and then releasing them. I spot a nice hogfish down there and I swim down to put the bait in front of him and you're about to see how annoying these little grunts are.
They took my bait. I was trying to entice this hogfish with my little shrimp, but he didn't seem to care at all. I put it right in front of him and he wouldn't eat it. Little did I know that Dan literally just caught this hogfish, so he, he knew what the deal was. That's why he wasn't eating. I'm messing with a couple grunts down there that are eating my bait, and out of nowhere, Dan comes and almost got himself hooked. That would have been a Florida fishing couple catch and cook right there. I'm telling you, we can't get away from these grunts. They're everywhere. Anyone want a grunt? <laughs> I spot another nice hogfish directly under me, and I try to put my shrimp in front of his face, but you already know what's about to happen. All these little fish. This time I actually hold on to the jig so the grunts won't take the bait. And the grunts stay away from me. And this is my chance. I mean, he's probably not big enough, but hey, fun. yeah, that was fun. After releasing that hogfish, I swim down there with a shrimp, no hook in it this time, and try to give him a farewell severance package, but he wasn't interested. I don't blame him. Seems like all these hogfish in this area were only about 14, 15 inches. And we were dealing with a lot of grunts, as you can see here. Can't tell you how many I caught. So I think it's time to do a little bit of spear fishing. All right, now we're a little bit further offshore, three miles away from land where you're allowed to spear fish. I put a little bit of chum in the water earlier. We waited about 15 minutes and I jump in. And you see this little white string? This device is called a G-string and it allows you to keep your pole spear loaded at all times without putting all that pressure on your hand. Super great when you're diving deep. And when you're ready to fire, you just push forward and it disengages itself. As I take my first look underwater, there's a freaking mutton snapper down there eating the fiddler crabs that we threw down. He's just sitting there chewing on them, so it's game on. This part was really bad because he got himself stuck on a rock and was putting a lot of force on that slip tip. Many times in this situation, if it would have been a bad shot, like a gut shot, he probably would have ripped off and got away. Luckily, he was stuck on there real good. This mutton snapper went absolute mental. He was freaking out and I couldn't grab him properly because I didn't have gloves. And mutton snappers have massive spikes on their dorsal fins. Holy mother! And I get stabbed like 15 times in my hand and also in the side of my body. Note to self, wear gloves and just grab the sucker. I should wear my gloves. looked at him he looked at me and I was like oh hey don't mind me man the pull spear is amazing see those spikes he got me so good so many times I was like shit I'm dying oh that was sick that was so sick
We were done hog dogging, so the rest of the shrimp I put under this little crevice to let the reef fish eat. And this barracuda kept coming real close to us, so I gave him a little warning shot. <laughs> I gave him a warning shot. Dan asked me to show him how that G-string works, so I'm gonna show it one more time on video here. You load your band, and it just pops right into that rope, and now your gun is locked and loaded, or your pole spear, actually. And when you're ready to fire, you put your hand in the band, and you just push forward a little bit to disengage it, and you're ready to shoot. And then to load it again, you just put the little string on it, let go, and it's ready to go. It's called a G-string. All right, time to head to the Isla Mirada sandbar, do some cooking and have some fun. You guys ready to look in the cooler? Check it out. We about to do some cooking up in here. We're gonna be cooking hot sausage at the sandbar, but we'll cook them up later in this video. I gotta do a voiceover for this before I get a copyright strike with all the sandbar music going on, but we got Dan and Elizabeth seasoning up some onions and peppers. I got the magma grill heating up. They got the vegetables cooking. And remember, if you don't follow them on YouTube, check them out, Florida Fishing Couple. I'll link them in the video description if you wanna check out their channel. These are some hot sausages cooked to perfection by Dan himself. And then we just take some bread rolls, throw on some sausage, throw on some vegetables, and we got ourselves a real good sandwich right here. Now it's time to cook up the mutton. It's the next day. The mutton sniper was on ice all night. And guess what? We're going to the sandbar again. Hey Dan, check it out. Man, look at that. We have a camera woman. <laughs> Much better than a cameraman, by the way. Oh, what's this? I think that's Elizabeth's uh, vodka mix. -up. That, mm, that looks like there. ruby grapefruit. I think that's got like eight shots in it. <laughs> Holy smokes. All right, so there's little... Are we bringing all this ice? All of it. Oh my all? God. Well, we're gonna need it. Some of it's soft ice. What is soft ice, you might ask? Yeah, what is soft ice? That's ice that came right out of the uh, out of the ice maker, but didn't go into the freezer first. I got a soft bag, and this is a hard, hard bag, right? You're doing wonderful. Unbelievable. All we're gonna do now is grab the mutton snapper, play it real quick, and yeah, and then we're gonna cook it up. Watch out, world. Hey. <laughs> There you go. Loading up the boat. Where's Gotta the other get beer? Me some right, boats and okay. hoes. Right, Dan said this is your eight shot tequila grapefruit. Not tequila. <laughs> Not tequila. <laughs> vodka. Oh, he wasn't kidding. Yeah, no, he wasn't kidding. It's vodka. <laughs> oh boy, today's gonna be. Oh, is a mud snapper in there? Uh, Dan took it out. Okay, let's find it. Be careful walking backwards. That's right, I'm looking at you. We're gonna take the mud snapper. You can get in close for this. Flatten him out. You know, he's been in a bucket. He's a little funny shaped. We're gonna keep the head too, because I might make a mutton snapper head soup or something. Let's cut. I may have picked the wrong knife for this job. He's easy to fillet. This knife's just not sharp. Okay, okay, okay. We're in for a treat. We got ourselves some meat, and we're gonna actually keep the head and make a little soup. Check it out, Dan, not too yeah. bad, huh? Shoot, that's awesome, Dad, man. Yeah. You can see right through that. Yeah, good job. Yeah, babe. Dan's approved. All right, all right, all right. And we're, we're right now we're skinning it. There we go. Mutton snapper filet. We got the meat, we got the skin. I'm gonna fillet the rest, but y'all don't need to see the rest. Y'all just wanna watch the cooking. So I wrap it in paper towels, keeps it fresh, and I'll see you guys in the kitchen later. Did I tell you yesterday how impressed I am with that, sh with that shot? With that pole spear shot, oh. getting this mutton snapper? How many times have you said, I can never get a mutton snapper with a spear gun? They're too, they're too, I don't know, first of all, they're, they're too they're fast. finicky, yeah. Yeah, they're too smart. They go down 10 seconds, man, and bang, you come up with that thing. I was like, Whoa! So that was an amazing shot. Before we cook this mutton up, here's a couple quick scenes from the sandbar that day. Everything is great. <laughs> awesome day.
I got the mutton snapper in this bag here, and then I got everything to make curry with. And we are about to drive over to Dan's house and make some mutton snapper curry because I don't have any dishes at my house. That's why we're going to Dan's house because Dan's got everything. We're at Dan's house and Elizabeth's. The floor fishing humble. Look at this kitchen. But we got a mutton snapper. And today we are going to make curry mutton snapper. And the way to start it is very simple. You take a little bit of olive oil, any kind of olive oil. That comes out really slow, Don. But you know what? No you want the good things to last longer, yeah, so. We don't want to squirt no olive oil. All right, there we go. Wow. That's what I use to cook my hot sausage. Damn it. And then two very simple steps. You put in a bag of peas, and you put in some carrots. Drop in your peas. Drop in your carrots. And then, uh, you know, turn the heat on. Oh, wow, you you guys are fancy. You got the propane. So I turn this, and it automatically... I need to get some propane. We're going to first cook these, let them kind of simmer up a little bit for probably about five or ten minutes, and then we're going to add the fish to it. R-E-C, rec, red, for record. We're, we're rolling, is it rolling? <laughs> okay, we are rolling, okay. We got our peas and we got our carrots softened up lightly. Now we're gonna add, we're gonna add our fish now. Mutton snapper fish. You wanna stir that in there? Now we're gonna add a little bit of curry. I've always had a problem picking my favorite curry. So that's why I have three different companies curries because I figure a little bit of everything is always better than just one, a lot of one. This curry, that curry, and that curry. A little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yes. Normally I do this with chicken, but fish cooks a lot faster than chicken. So we'll see how this turns out. We got the peas, carrots, and fish in there and some curry. Now we're gonna take this Thai kitchen light coconut milk dumper in there like that and now this is the part that requires skill. To find the perfect balance between juice. We're gonna fill it with water. Mm -hmm. That looks perfect right there. Yeah, just like that, you wanna like Kind of cover everything in in water after adding the coconut juice. This is where things get really fun. Y'all ever see this? They sell it at Publix. If you're not from Florida, bless your soul. What it is is uh, it's like a, a thing of curry. So I like to break it up like this. Break it up into squares, traditional squares, and then you just kind of. Flop them around in here. There, just like that. We're gonna let all of this cook and simmer and just give it a thing. You know, people's phones going off. Don't you ever like go to the movie theaters and it's like silence is golden? <laughs> I'm gonna add a little more curry cause I'm, I got a problem. And one last, actually two last ingredients. Crushed red pepper. This one's for all the homies out there. Yes, right there. That was the perfect amount. And then the red, white, and blue outdoors Reaper. If you like spicy food, this'll do it. I was told today that we want to keep it at a very minimum spicy, so I'm only going to do a couple squirts. Just squirt, squirt. Squared pull out. That's it. Mix that all up and just low simmer this for about 15 minutes. 
Yeah, we got the non bread in the oven. We got it heating up in the oven. This is the non bread right here. And they sell it at Publix, and it's really good. I can eat a lot of this stuff. The garlic, the non roasted garlic from Stone Fire. Sponsor me. This is basmati rice in the rice cooker. That rice is ready, so here's the key. What you do is you take a bowl. We're gonna take take some rice, fill the bottom of your bowl, and we're gonna, oh, do we have a little pooper scooper? Like a little ladle? We got ourselves a pooper scooper. And then just give yourself a nice ladle. Hey, I think I'm starting to smell the naan burning. Is the naan burning? Yeah, I so we got some naan in the oven. All right, bam, rice, Curry, look at that. Does it look good? Looks great. Yeah, that naan is ready. Yeah. That naan is ready, ready. Where's the uh, off cancel button? There you go. That's it. And then you take yourself a little naan bread, like <laughs> ten, two, half second rule, and you just <laughs> shove it in there, and there you go. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> Should I take a bite too? Yes. yes. For sure. Absolutely. What do you need there? A fork spoon? Oh, no, I'll just Not it. this like this. It's too hot. I can't hold that bread. It's, it's too, too hot. hot. Get a fork. All right. Five, ten seconds. Just ten second roll. Uh, no, yeah. Oh God, you're gonna die. <laughs> Don't run into the open oven. Mmm. Wow, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks painful. <laughs> Here we go, we're ready. Time to eat. All right, all right, group. Give us a census. Okay. What do you think? All right, first ready? bite. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Okay. It really is great. Okay. It's like uh, spicy, but it's also. Um, Rich from the coconut milk, it's really good. I love the curry. Yeah, the curry, the curry is great. And the naan bread just kind of does the whole deal. So. I haven't had any. Yeah, yeah. this is awesome. Try it with All right, on. here, here. Excellent, yeah. excellent recipe, Heiko. Thank you for making dinner, Heiko. And you. you know what? We, we did justice to this mutton. I just got a piece of the fish. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's yeah. like tender, and it's yeah. also firm. It's really good. It's mm -hmm. really good. This is I would have never thought to do curry with a fish like never. this. Very good. All right, great Thank recipe. Thank you, Diego. <laughs> great job, man. <laughs> They're so nice to me. <laughs> it's the truth. We tell you if it sucked. <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> We'd be like, dude, I can't eat this. Yeah. <laughs> that curry is the good good. Go and try it. You will be so happy. Tomorrow we are going to Bimini. I got myself some drinks, so I should be able to stay hydrated for the next few days. Dan and Elizabeth will be on that trip. Junior and his wife and another couple. And I'm bringing my friend Candy. I promised her I would show her the world and I don't break promises. So smash that subscribe button if you want to see the Bimini trip. I'm actually bringing my whole computer set up all the way to Bimini. So hopefully I can put out a video for you guys while we're actually there. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.